Uh, respected chairperson and all the co-presenters, uh, I'm Shahnawaz Muntazir and good morning to you all. I'm Shahnawaz Muntazir, I'm from Kashmir, I'm an assistant professor and I work in a college. My talk topic is about, uh, it's about uh, again the Western and Eastern uh, confluence and what are the uh, conflicts that we go through in this uh, interaction between the two cultures. So my, top, my title is Ali Ba Jeem of Style and Signature of Eastern Flatness and Western Perspective. What I am referring to in this title is uh, to Orhan Pamuk's book, My Name is Red, hope you have read it. So in that uh, novel he talks about uh, the conflicting waves of uh, East and West. There are stories which are uh, titled under ALF and there are stories, the antithetical stories which are titled, which are titled Ba and then he arrives at a conclusion in Jeem. So they usually talk about style and signature about flatness and perspective of Eastern. East usually represents flatness and West represents perspective. Okay, so at the same time we have um, he talking about the Eastern and Western ideologies, about the philosophy that, that is an important component of our being that, you, that makes a person Eastern or an Oriental and an Occidental. So my topic is about this Eastern and Western confluence. I'm talk, uh, we will, uh, I will be discussing in my paper about how East and West have uh, influenced each other, have got inspired from each other. But within this ambit, there are certain uh, conflicts which do exist, which exist right now. And there is a traditional stance which has existed in uh, European uh, mentality, European philosophy, European ideology about the East and which still, uh, still persists in our postmodern era. They have certain prejudices with respect to Eastern people which st still exist. They are still, um, um, you know, d trying to dominate our discourse. But at the same time, East is presenting, East is presenting a resistance to that. East is trying to present its identity, frame its identity in a different way. So my topic in my uh, paper is about that. I'm actually talking about in this paper uh, how East resists the West and how West tries to dominate the East and how these two cultures come together and inspire and influence each other. And what happens to the art? My main concern is what happens to the art? What happens to an object of art when it comes under the influence of so many cultures? And can there, is there any possibility that we can um, judge art on the basis of art itself? not by judging it through uh, Eastern lens or the Western lens. So this is uh, what I will be discussing in my paper. Well, as we all know, the central trope of imperialism is what Abdul Rahman Jan Muhammad terms the Manichaean allegory. He's a scholar and he talks about uh, Eastern and Western, uh, I mean to say, uh, how these two identities are framed. And we know about that they have been always treated as uh, on, on the basis of the Manichaean allegory, on the basis of evil and good. As we know, Mani was a Persian poet. So this is about him. He has come out with his own cult of religion, which is called Manichaeism which divides the uh, world into light and darkness. So Abdul Rahman Jan Muhammad talks about that, uh, the, the, about, he talks about the imperialist mentality, that they divide this world into the Manichaean allegory. That is, West represents, it represents what we call uh, the light. And what we represent, I mean to say, East represents holy, it represents darkness, it represents evil, they represent good, we, they represent reason, and we represent irrationality. That's, what, uh, he, that's how he started it. Uh, that's what, how I am starting it, and that's what he has to say about it. So this Manichaean allegory that sublimated into Western thought into binary opposition, as we know about the structuralist thought, that this uh, Manichaean allegory has been sublimated into what we call the binary opposition, which was given by Saussure, as you, you all may know about it. So he talks about irrational and rational, and then it was taken up by the later Orientalists who have divided it into uh, as Eastern and Western people, that Eastern people are irrational, they are lazy, they are sick, and all about all the things that we have been heard in, uh, that we have heard about in our theories, our Orientalist theories through Edward Said and others like Gayatri Spivak and Homi Baba. And on the other hand, we have Western uh, context that they consider themselves as rational, as um, uh, more um, uh, superior than we are. So this thought comes through the Orientalists and basic example, I mean, uh, the most important examples are Sassy. Sassy was one of the French uh, writers who talked about this Western uh, thought of, you know, uh, that they are better than us. 
So uh, this is how my uh, paper starts. This opposition is not only anchored in the respective identities of the two cultures, but rather secures them. So this is important. This is very important for uh, the two identities, that how they are framed, how they are um, shown to be different from each other. The opposition is essentialist as well as relativist. Uh, and is exemplified at its best in the novel My Name is Red, written by Orhan Pamuk. I have started the discussion with, my, uh, with the novel My Name is uh, Red, which is written by Orhan Pamuk, and the title comes from that. Orhan Pamuk's My Name is Red represents, it's an exemplary, you know, exemplary novel which uh, presents different discourses, which presents the interaction between the East and the West, what happens to the Eastern art when it comes to the, under the influence of the Western, uh, Western thought, Western art, and Western aesthetics. That how we try to judge, how we try to mold and change ourselves according to the Western conventions, because they have been always the pe people who spell out the standard, and not we. So this is how he discusses it in, uh, he starts, I have started with, my name is Red, because he discusses all these issues. There are two groups of miniaturists. Miniaturists are those people who paint according to the Eastern conventions of art, which represents flatness, which represents, on the other hand, as we have uh, seen in our literature or in our, um, what we say, visual arts or any other, even in dance, uh, even in our dance, they are performed for the divinity. They are not performed for the sake of uh, only entertainment. So this is what uh, I'm trying to explain here. Though the two traditionals have influenced each other, but they have always maintained their essential individuality. They shown to be uh, fundamentally flawed because it has been uh, institutionalized through our educational system and has trained thousands of men and women to uh, discard cultural reality in favor of a concept that has never been valid, if we ask ourselves what anyone means by a national literature, the most common answer is the creative writing and therefore reading of a specific uh, community. But the question of the answer remains uh, simple only as long as we do not recognize that translation and language study have attained such a level of exchange that there is no literature society uh, in the world today that is not thoroughly involved with the writing and reading of the language communities. The central question to discuss in the paper, the social dimension of, of fiction draws upon a particularly uh, rich philosophic tradition which considers referentiality. It follows a margin herder, Hans George Gardner, and particularly Paul Ricoeur. The fiction attains meaningfulness, though uh, referentiality to the experience and world, but the historical, the Christ that world uh, circumscribed uh, referentially to the author's uh, circumstances are reductive, and further that subjectivistic arguments that ignore textual his uh, uh, historicity are merely impropesnical impro appreciations. The theory of uh, interpretation is a relational theory of a fictional reference in which terms gain meaning through four simultaneous operations. The one is uh, ostensive reference to the uh, semantic system, and second is socio-cultural reference through language. Green domain without and like a blinding flash of wings when they open in the middle of the sky. The key signs are the functional words like and when beyond the obvious grammatical uses, we must recognize the functional role the signs perform in setting of the pattern of relationships. The, uh, the adjective like performs uh, the sense-making uh, functioning of uh, resemblance and uh, transfer. 
Thus, the pattern is one of a, a resemble, uh, and by calling attention to this resemblance, there is a shift of focus whereby gains in sense by the transfer of uh, characteristics of A. In our present example, there is a double indeterminate aspect because we cannot immediately recognize how green domain can be said to resemble a blinding flash and further we cannot recognize how it is that wings which unfold in the sky can produce a blind, blinding flash when is a conjunction with the function of uh, producing temporal specification in the subordinate clause. Thus, the uh, semantic problem is that it is not clear how the temporal specification of opening wings in the middle of the sky can produce a blind flash. Socio-cultural reference through the ideological models of the specific language. Speaking group. The socio-cultural influence here is to power dominance and sudden uh, disruption of this uh, uh, hitherate unchallenged domain. The referentiality is not the direct uh, ostensive reference but rather on indirect as the real proprietors of the soil. Like Okonko of Chino Achibe's things fall apart, Birsha was determined to emancipate his people from the economic, political, and cultural invasion of the British. He dreams of a world in which there won't be any moneylenders, sahibs, no outsiders. There will be forests and hills all around. Resistance to colonial domination often took the form of widespread physical conflicts. The British, however, suppressed their movement in a ruthless manner. Police took... It's, it's over, time? Uh, okay, so I'll just now focus on uh, the movie Avatar. Compared to the late 19th century time frame of Arunner Odhikar, the story of Avatar is set in the year 200, 1054, when the Earth's inhabitants, having used up most of their natural resources through decades of living in excess, plan to use military force to conquer Pandora. People by humanoids who choose to live in harmony and natural equilibrium with their surroundings. Over, over the millennia, the Navi, that is the people of the Pandora, developed a healthy respect and reverence for their surrounding environment. After discovering a wealth of natural resources, humans are attempting to exploit these resources. Uh, but the Navi want to protect it from destruction. The um, Jack Sully, the um, avatar in the movie, Sympathizing with the Navi after becoming acquainted with them and their customs becomes a turncoat and helps lead the people of Pandora in the defense of their homeland. He says, I quote from, the, uh, from a dialogue, the sky people have sent us a message that they can take whatever they want, that no one can stop them. Well, we will send them a message and we will show the sky people that they cannot take whatever they want and this is our land. But finally, fin and finally, Pandora, na Pandora natives prevent humans from, the, from depleting their uh, environment. To conclude, both the texts are message of support for the struggles of native peoples today and the expression of group, group solidarity and social cohesion and act as a unifying force for groups under the conditions of social disorganization. And in the light of ecological perspective provided by Mahashweta Devi and James Cameron, we are able to recognize how important it is that one, it's just last sentence. It's the last sentence, sir. Uh, we are able to recognize how important it is that one has to protect one's environment from the irresistible pace of modernization contributed to the process of detribalization. Thank you. Thank you. Let me talk about only the main ideas of this presentation. As just, I gave you the handouts, which consists of this. Okay? So this paper focuses on religious and 
Social Relevance of Moby Dick. The American novelist, the popular one, and the Nobel laureate, okay? So he is a Herman Melville's novel is uh, this Moby Dick. So it is needless to say that literature is mirror of life, right? So through this novel, the author wants to put some insights into the reader, particularly Americans. At the time, the technology was developing and the people are uh, becoming less conscious of moral concerns as uh, you know the changes you can observe the changes in the society so today if you take how is the technology and if you compare with the history and the uh, ancient civilization how was the technology so today technology is destroying everything just now my previous uh, speaker talked about the author where is the destruction of ecology and whatever you say so all the characters in the novel gives us the idea of very common persons in the society and the central line of the novel deals with the relationship between Ahab the central character and Moby Dick a white whale actually a journey was set on, that is a voyage was uh, set on to a sea as a part of a whaling industry. So their job is to hunt whales. So if you see, whale represents the nature. Yes, it is. After all, we represent nature. We are a part of nature. Every living being is a part of nature. And if you take each and every character, their inner psyche, their attitude, their behavior, their thoughts, affects their lives. So I'm sorry to sum up. So all the characters will die because this Moby Dick attacks the ship and everybody dies, except one, that is uh, Ishmael. If you take the character, there are many biblical references are there, almost all the characters. Just I want to focus on only Ishmael because Ishmael belongs to Bible text, that is a Christian text, and you take a Quran, you take Persian, almost all the religious texts have this Ishmael. That means he never wanted to be identified that he belongs to a particular community. So he survived. He is the lone survival in the ship. So it clearly says that this person wanted to change. This person wanted to adjust himself to the oddities and hurdles in the life. That's the only reason that which made him to survive. So if you are unable to adjust, if you are unable to equip yourselves with the courage and with the technology, whatever skill, which is needed to survive in this world, you cannot survive. And uh, the main character, Ahab, he is very proud. He is monio monomaniac. That means because, his because of his revenge with the Moby Dick, he orders all the people to hunt the Moby Dick even though their job was done. Right? So you can see the leader in the Ahab. And you compare this Ahab in the Bible. Ahab was a king. He was a very evil king which is, uh, that is ever known. So you compare these two. So as a leader, Ahab is supposed to save all the lives of the ship, all the persons in the ship. But instead what he has done is he destructed himself and he killed himself and uh, all the people also. So here this person represents a common leader, a ruler, or a head of a family, head of an organization. If you take in the general sense or the social consequence, social relevance. So if a leader who is supposed to lead a group or a community or whatever, so if that person is not having the righteousness of the wisdom, righteousness of the knowledge, that means the ability to distinguish between the both good and bad. As you say, you have the difference between knowledge and wisdom. 
knowledge can be anything but wisdom gives you the best result which is inside of god suppose you have a bomb in your hand so if you throw it it will blast that is knowledge and what is wisdom if you throw the bomb here everybody dies so you're not supposed to do it so today the technology all the people who are uh, inventing all the new ideas scientific breakthroughs everything you take every sphere not only science everything so really are we really doing the good in the society 